A special Stuart 5A steam engine repair, part one. Having a look at the engine. This really is a most unusual Stuart 5A. It was specially made to power a full-size steamboat, which is what it's been recently removed from, because there's a problem with it. I love the reversing lever. The whole engine is very well made, including this beautiful reversing lever and frame, which is made from brass. As you pull the lever back and forth, underneath it engages with some slots, and it has a spring-loaded mechanism that holds it in the slot positions. What about the rest of the engine? That's just the top part. Here's the bottom part, and it's been disassembled by the owner because there's a problem with it. There's a brass plate on the front of the engine which says R. L. Stant, Engineer, 1975. In this clip, I'm having a feel at the big end brasses. The one on the left hand side feels fine. The one on the right hand side, however, doesn't feel so good. A bit like me, really. I've caught another cold, I think. I can't believe it. I've only just got over the first one. But I will carry on regardless. This is not very good engineering. Something's a bit wrong here. These links are bent purposely at this side, probably to clear the lock nuts. It looks like this has been done as a bit of an afterthought, but both of the links are a different length, so obviously when the builder built this engine, it was designed to have one of the links at each side bent to clear the lock nuts. During my series about the building of the Blackgate's twin steam engine, when I try and synchronise two together, I was told by quite a lot of armchair engineers that I shouldn't use belts. Well then, what is this? I'm working on a full-size steam engine, this is not a model, and it powers a full-size steamboat. And this engine drives a very large propeller in the boat, and it's all belt-driven, using this broad multi-V belt. If you've been watching my Blackgate's Twin series, then you will know that I've used a tooth belt, which also works quite well, but I was told that steam engines shouldn't use belts. I rest my case. Moving now to the other end of the engine, this is a really clever mechanical contrivance. Not only does it lubricate the cylinders, it also lubricates the main bearing. This part of the mechanism that I'm spinning is the cylinder lubricator, and you can see some oil coming out of the feed to the cylinders. To make the mechanical lubricator move at this speed, I'm rotating a very large gear that you can't see in this picture. In this next clip, you can see a little bit of the gear as I rotate it with my fingers. So what's happening at the bottom? Something very strange is going on. There is a spring-loaded ram in a pump, and this is pulled out of the pump by the specially shaped cam, which suddenly releases it so the ram can be pulled back into the pump cylinder. And the output from this pump cylinder is connected to this pipe, which supplies oil to the substantial main bearing in the centre of the engine. I would assume that there is a drilling in the centre of this crankshaft that allows some oil to get to the crank pin, which in turn lubricates the big end. So the lubrication must have been very good at this side of the engine. This is big end number one. And when I spin the engine round to look at big end number two, I really don't know why this one is so worn. I mean, just look at it, it's a rattle fit. However, if you look closely at this image, you will see that the crank web on the left-hand side of the image has been welded. So maybe at some stage in the engine's history, the crankshaft broke. I've turned the engine around so you can see it from the other side. Yes, and it's clearly very worn indeed. I've changed the camera angle and you can see where I'm pointing with the scriber there is clear evidence of welding at some time in the engine's life, and there's only evidence of welding on this one crank web. The rest of the crankshaft looks like it's been turned from the solid. I'm going to revisit this wonderful mechanical contrivance that lubricates the engine. This large sprocket, which has a crank pin on it, is used to drive a water pump to maintain the water level in the boiler. This has also been welded, but I think that was probably done when it was made. With a sprocket driving from the crankshaft to a larger sprocket, on the other side of this sprocket is a cam, and the cam follower moves this rod back and forth, which in turn moves the ratchet mechanism. Nowhere near this speed, though, I'm exaggerating the movement. Looking at the other side of the sprocket, you can see the cam, and here's the cam follower that operates the lever. 
This lever is spring-loaded, it's a bit loose, but it works. It's all quite ingenious. I would have thought this would have failed, but apparently not. It's been fine for quite a long time. I'm going to end this video by looking at the mechanism at the top end of the engine. The one on the left for the cylinder drain cocks and the one on the right for forward and reverse, which also allows the engine to be notched up to make it more economical when it's running on steam. And that's it for the preliminary video, the overview video. So I'd like to say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Thank <laughs> you.